Make sure on the green tea extract you don't take too much of it because you might get too much caffeine. Make you kind of bound up, get you a little anxious, a little nervous. Okay? Is tea bad for you? I, you know, really not bad. Okay? There's just some areas you got to watch. One of them, if you have too many cytokines, those antioxidants I talked about that help fight things for your body, you can actually get uh, upset stomach, muscle spasms, um, you can get some digestive problems. And you you kind of know that, you start getting those, you'll see that. Kidney stones. You could, you could get kidney stones if you're not getting enough water, flushing these items out. So again, that water comes into play on that. Also, because it's got caffeine in it, if you, if you have high blood pressure, hypertension, if your heart races a little bit fast, you got some anxiousness, might want to watch that a little bit. That could be a side effect or a problem for you, especially if you're diabetic, have heart disease, or you're anxious in general. Um, it also has a little aluminum in it. Now, they haven't proven that there's any aluminum properties giving trouble for people, you know, like for Parkinson's or dementia-type problems, but it's on the table right now. And then lastly, for, um, lastly, um, as far as being bad for you, there's also a iron area that we have to look at. If you take tea with food, it can sometimes stop the amount of iron getting pulled into your body. It can cause some malabsorption. So if you have some anemias or some iron deficiencies, you'd want to make sure you take the tea between meals. Don't take it with a meal. That's what they're finding on that aspect. Um, also, it's kind of a little fun fact we put on here. If you put tea on the kettle, it just here that it's steep in itself, it tends to relax you. They found 25% more relaxation from that aspect than drinking the tea itself. Not a bad deal, huh? Just here in that kettle. Kind of like smelling your coffee in the morning. How many people like that smell in the morning, huh? Uh, yeah, relaxation. So again, relaxing is good stuff there. All right, I wanted to turn it over. I want to kind of turn this a little bit because there's only so much information on tea. <laughs> but here's how tea plays a role in what I see is going on for you guys. I see that it has antioxidant effect. It helps give you guys some immune system boosting. Okay. I think that's going to give you energy boost. Okay. Which I think is very important. I think that it also hydrates as long as you keep drinking plenty of that during the day. There's not enough caffeine in it, which if it's green tea to, hide, to dehydrate you. So I feel good about those facts. I wanted to kind of turn that to your adrenal glands, and here's why. Every talk I do, I try to make sure that it focuses on you as, as what you guys need. But for cancer and cancer fighting, you gotta make sure that you have stress under control. Okay, now, tea can help with some of the chemical stresses. We wanna make sure we have that under control. Anybody here deal with a lot of emotional stress? Emotional stress? How about physical, how about physical stress? about this. <laughs> <laughs> the answer's got to be yes, right? Absolutely. And the reason I bring that up is because there's an organ in your body that helps fight with that. That's your adrenal gland, okay? And if you've had cancer, if you've had, uh, you know, those type of diseases, if you've had, you know, chemotherapy, you've had the radiation, your body's really been succumbed to a lot of stress, physically, chemically, emotionally. This organ works overtime. It works overtime. And I tell you what, it's a key ingredient to your immune system function and energy in your body. Now, something that uh, um, produces...